Developed and published by Phosphor Games, Corpse of Discovery is certainly an odd game, but that's to be expected coming from Phosphor. They seem to pride themselves on presenting games on the slightly twisted side, and the video game market is better because of them. Corpse puts players into the mind and body of an interplanetary explorer who wakes up on strange planets over and over again, trying to discover his purpose. At his side is a sometimes helpful, sometimes snarky, floating white robot named Ava. Hello, I am the Ava Software Version 721. I am here to help you complete the parameters of your mission. Though there is very little to speak of in terms of gameplay, many will categorize Corpse of Discovery as a dreaded walking simulator, despite clearly using a jetpack to hop from floating platform to platform. They'd be right to do so, but that pejorative moniker never dissuaded me from trying something a little on the experimental side. Schlepping from waypoint to sometimes muddled waypoint, bit by bit, the game's purpose and exposition are slowly dribbled out. Without getting into spoiler territory, because it would be easy with this title, the player character contemplates his decision to go on a massive interplanetary operation. Are you thinking of repairing your ship? This is not part of a core sanctioned mission, and it is unlikely you will find the parts you need to complete the repair. You should return to your mission parameters and wait for the rescue craft. The game teeters back and forth between depressing and sometimes just strange. There were times when I had to put it down just to mentally process it. So, big kudos to the game for evoking a legitimate emotional reaction from me. Well, at first, anyway. By the end of my playthrough, I had grown a little tired of Corpse of Discovery. The distance between waypoints started feeling longer and longer and more and more arbitrary as I progressed. Traveling such long distances through each world didn't add to that particular landscape's majesty. That was established within the first minute on each world. For an indie project, Corpse is a pretty good looking game. The interior workings of the land base is fun to poke through. The animals are familiar, exotic, and otherworldly all at the same time. But the landscapes are procedurally generated. It's an interesting way to approach the game so each player witnesses something unique, but with that method comes some problems. I had a few of my waypoints stuck inside objects like rocks and plants, making them frustratingly out of reach after spending a good amount of time trying to trudge or climb to them. The randomized landscapes can also be a little taxing on some people's machines. Mine really started to chug on a raining planet. It's also frustrating when the game isn't consistent about what is and is not a solid object. The developers did such a wonderful job crafting the interiors of Corpse of Discovery, I can't help but wonder what type of product the game could be if they handcrafted their exteriors as well. In terms of stability, I experienced a hefty amount of screen tearing. For the first time ever, I was clamoring to find a V-Sync option in a game, but to no avail. I had to retry the final level quite a few times, not because I failed, but because I experienced one random crash and two crashes caused by hitting the escape key to bring up the game's menu. Not good. I appreciate the game's willingness to approach mature subjects in video games, and I'm not using the term mature as synonymous with blowing people up or flashing nudity. It's rare for a game to make me introspective, making me think about the decisions I made during the day. What seemingly important thing did I erroneously pass up to take part of something trivial? And that's what I really loved about Corpse of Discovery. This is definitely not a game that will reach a huge audience. It's a bit too rough around the edges, a little too much like an art game for many. And like I said, sometimes the distances between waypoints was a little too much, and at times felt like padding to increase the total game completion time. There's not much replay value here, like many walking simulators, but I for one enjoyed my time with it. I'd say check this one out if you're in the mood for something a little out of the ordinary, but don't expect to feel uplifted after each play session. This video is made possible through generous fan donations on Patreon. 